my name is Lavella de los Santos and today I'll be doing a cardiovascular exam and peripheral exam but before that I'm going to do a room scan. Santos, I'll be your nurse practitioner student for today and I want to ask for your verbal consent if you will allow me to record you on video and upload it to YouTube as I'm listed so that my professor can view it and grade it. Is that okay? Yes. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and perform on hygiene. So can you tell me your name and date of birth? Yes, um, Alexis Montalegre. April 26, 1995. All right, perfect. So I'm going to do a cardiovascular and peripheral exam on you, okay? So before that, I'm going to do a blood pressure check. So I'm going to do it on both of his arms, and I'm going to do it while he's upright and supine, and I'm going to compare it. And I'll make sure that he's using the right size of cup on his body habitus so that he can get the most accurate result, all right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and position my patient. Uh, supine, 30 degrees to 45 degrees approximately. Because I'm going to check for the jugular vein pressure. The first thing I'm gonna do is to um, inspect for the uh, external neck, for the vessels of the neck. So if there is any abnormalities, I don't see any. So now I'm going to go ahead and put a pillow underneath his head. So this pillow is actually uh, to relax the neck and relax the sternocleidal muscle. Because I'm going to ask my patient to turn his head on his left. Can you turn your head on the left? All right. And I'm going to find the pulsations on the suprasternal notch. So once I find the suprasternal notch, I'm going to find the... Uh, highest oscillation point or the highest pulsations so once I find the highest pulsation I'm gonna go ahead and use my horizontal card on top of it and then I'm gonna measure it with a centimeter ruler vertically and then place it on the sternal angle and then I'm going to measure it so the measurement is actually two centimeter which is a normal finding for jugular vein pressure the normal finding is actually less than 3 cm. So above that, it could be an indication that the patient might have an acute or chronic heart failure. Alright? So now I'm going to go ahead and palpate for his carotid. So the thing with carotid, you need to palpate it one at a time so that you will not occlude the flow into the brain and you will not cause any syncope. Alright? So I'm going to palpate his right side. Alright? I'm going to palpate your right side of the artery. So I don't feel any thrills and vibrations. Um, the carotid upstroke is actually breeze, is smooth and rapid. The amplitude is plus two, which is normal expected finding. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the other side. All right. All right, so I don't feel any vibrations or thrills. The carotid upstroke is breeze, is smooth and rapid. And the amplitude is plus two, which is normal and expected finding. Now I'm going to go ahead and auscultate using the uh, diaphragm of my stethoscope. So I'm going to auscultate for Brewy on his carotid artery. So I'm going to ask my patient to hold your breath. So go, okay, go hold your breath for 10 seconds and then I'm going to listen for Brewy. Alright, there's no Brewy on this carotid. I'm going to go ahead and do it on the left side. Alright. Uh, can you hold your breath for 10 seconds? All right. All right, perfect. So uh, there's no brewery, which is normal finding. All right. So as he's lying supine, I'm already uh, inspecting the anterior part of his chest. So I'm checking for any deformities. 
I don't see any heaves or lips. I don't see any structural deformities or abnormalities like uh, sunken chest, pigeon chest. There's no scoliosis that I can see. Um, I don't see any paradoxical movement. I don't see any masses, lesions, scars, or any uh, swelling, which is all normal finding. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and visualize the uh, apical impulse pulsation. So right now I don't see the apical visual pulsation. I also don't see any precordial pulsations. Now I'm gonna go ahead and palpate the point of maximal impulse. So actually the point of maximal impulse is also the apical impulse. So now I'm gonna go ahead and palpate it on the fifth intercostal space mid-clavicular. So to palpate it, I'm gonna ask my patient to uh, take a, hold your breath for a few seconds and then I'm gonna roll him on the left lateral decubitus position and then now I, I can palpate it and I don't feel any heaves or leaves and then I also don't feel any uh, ventricular enlargement and the uh, amplitude is actually brisk and tapping, which is all normal finding. All right, perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and palpate for uh, trills, hips, and lips. So first I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and palpate for hips and lips using the uh, palm of my hands. Now I'm gonna do it on the osculatory region. So first I'm gonna palpate it on the aortic area on the second intercostal space on the right sternal border. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to pul pulmonic area, which is on the second intercostal space on the left sternal border. Now I'm gonna go ahead and palpate into the herbs point, all right? In the third intercostal space on the left sternal border. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the tricuspid area, which is located in the Fourth intercostal space in the left sternal border, and now I'm gonna go ahead and palpate it to the mitral, which is also located on the left sternal border, uh, fifth intercostal space mid clavicular. So I don't feel any heaves and lifts, so which is all normal finding. Now I'm gonna go ahead and palpate using the ball of my hands, um, palpate for thrills. So. Um, I'm going to palpate in the same location, so I'm going to palpate it using the ball of my hands for trills, alright? I'm palpating it right now on the aortic area, moving on to the pulmonic area, then to the herbs point, and then to the tricuspid point, and then to the mitral area, alright? So I don't feel any trills using the... Uh, ball of my hands, so it's all normal finding. Now I'm gonna go ahead and palpate the aortic, uh, abdominal aortic area. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and check if I visualize any pulsations. There's no pulsations, and then the abdominal aortic area is actually located just right above the umbilicus, like two centimeter above the umbilicus, and then I'm gonna go ahead and palpate it. All right, I don't feel any uh, trills, hips, or lips, so it's all normal finding. All right, perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do auscultation. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and auscultate in all the auscultatory region. I'm going to use the diaphragm and bell of my stethoscope while auscultating on all areas. So first I'm going to auscultate, all right, so Alexis, I'm going to auscultate your um, aortic area, okay? So I'm going to auscultate on the second intercostal space on the right sternal border, the aortic area, all right? I'm using now the bell of my stethoscope, and now I'm going to switch it on to the... Uh, I'm using it the diaphragm of my stethoscope, and now I'm going to switch it on to the bell of my stethoscope, all right? I don't hear any brewy, I don't hear any murmur, clicks or gallops. So it's all normal finding. I hear S1 and S2, but I don't hear any S3 and S4. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the pulmonic area, which again located at the second intercostal space in the left sternal border. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and use the diaphragm of my stethoscope first and then switch on to the bell of my stethoscope. All right, so that I don't hear any murmur, clicks or gallops or any friction rub or I hear S1 and S2, but I don't hear any S3 and S4, which is all normal findings, all right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, listen for the physiologic splitting of S2, which is actually a normal finding because of the intrathoracic pressure when we breathe in. It is actually a normal delay between the closure of the aortic and pulmonic valves, So, which is all normal findings. So I'm now listening to it using that diaphragm and bell of my stethoscope. All right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the herbs point. I'm also gonna use the diaphragm and bell of my stethoscope. And now I'm also listening for any, if there's any uh, trills or murmur, clicks or gallops. I don't hear any, any abnormalities, so it's all normal findings. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the tricuspid area. So it's located in the fourth intercostal space in the left sternal border using again the diaphragm and bell of my stethoscope. I'm checking for any murmur, clicks, and gallops. There is none. By the way, the herbs point is actually located again on the third intercostal space in the left sternal border. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the mitral valve or the mitral area, which is located on the fifth intercostal space on the left sternal border, mid-clavicular. Now I'm checking for um, any murmur, clicks and gallops. There is none. I don't hear any um, S3 and S4, which is normal. So it's all normal finding. All right, perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and listen for Rui on your abdominal aortic area. So I'm going to again use the um, diaphragm and bell of my stethoscope. So, by the way, I'm going to go ahead again and use the diaphragm and bell of my stethoscope in the mitral area, okay? Diaphragm and bell, so there's no murmur, there's no gallops, there's no clicks, there's no pleural infusion, okay? Perfect. Now, I'm going to go ahead and move on now to the abdominal aortic area. So, I'm going to again use the diaphragm and bell of my stethoscope to listen for brewing. All right, it's again located just right above the umbilicus area. So using the diaphragm of my stethoscope, listening for brewy, there's no brewy. And then I'm gonna switch on to the bell, listening for brewy, there is no brewy, which is all normal findings, all right? Perfect. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and check for all the uh, four extremities. So I'm checking for color. So. The color is um, normal, it's light brown, and it's warm to touch. I don't see any visual abnormalities. I don't see any edema or pitting edema, there's none. There's no varicose veins, there's no shunts, there's no redness, there's no scars, there's no swelling, so it's all normal findings. So now I'm gonna go ahead and palpate for pulses. I'm gonna go ahead and palpate for um, uh, radial pulses first, okay? So I'm gonna do it at the same time so I can feel for symmetry, all right? So the radial pulse is located in the wrist, all right? So I'm checking for symmetry. So in the radial pulse, it's symmetrical and the rhythm is regular, the rate is 75, and the uh, amplitude is plus two, which is normal and expected, and the strength is normal. It's all normal finding. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the brachial artery, which is located just behind the elbow. All right, so I'm listening for, uh, the, the pulse is symmetrical. The rhythm is actually uh, regular. And then the rate is 75, the strength is normal, and the amplitude is plus 2, 
which is all normal timing. So that's the palpation for brachial. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to femoral artery. But before I palpate it, I'm gonna go ahead and auscultate for brumi. All right. So using the diaphragm and bell of my stethoscope, I'm go gonna go ahead and auscultate for brumi. And for the purpose of video of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and have my patient's pants on. But ideally, you have to um, auscultate it directly to the skin. So the femoral artery is actually located. Uh, just right uh, above in the upper thigh. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the diaphragm of my stethoscope and then switch on to the bell and listening for brewy. There's no brewy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the left side on the upper thigh using the diaphragm and bell. There's no brewy, so it's all normal finding. Now I'm gonna go ahead and palpate the femoral artery. So now I'm gonna go ahead and palpate it on both sides. So it's symmetrical. The rhythm is regular, the rate is 75, the strength is normal, and the amplitude is plus two, which is a normal and expected finding. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the popliteal artery. So the popliteal artery is actually located just behind the knee. So I'm gonna go ahead and palpate it together. All right, the pulse is symmetrical, the rhythm is regular, the rate is 75, the strength is normal, and the amplitude is plus two, which is normal and expected finding. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the dorsalis pedis, which is located on top of the first and second metatarsal bone. So, all right, I'm gonna palpate it together. So, okay, the pulse is symmetrical, the strength is normal, the rhythm is regular, the rate is 75, and the amplitude is plus 2, which is normal and expected finding. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the tibial pulse. So the tibial pulse is located in the medial malleolus, all right, behind the ankle. All right, perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and palpate it, palpate it both. All right, so again, the pulse is symmetrical, the rhythm is regular, the rate is 75, the strength is normal, and the amplitude is plus 2, which is normal and expected finding. All right, perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and check for the capillary refill. So I'm going to go ahead and check for the capillary refill on your fingers. All right. Okay, perfect. And now I'm gonna move on to the toes. Checking for capillary refills if it's less than three seconds. All right. All the capillary refills on his fingers and toes are less than three seconds, so which is a normal finding. Now I'm gonna go ahead and check for fingers and toes. All right, there is no clubbing. There is no signs of cyanosis. There's no bluish discoloration. There is no uh, tar stain and there is no uh, splinter hemorrhage this is all normal finding all right perfect so that concludes our cardiovascular and peripheral exam thank you and thank you so much for your cooperation all right